Right, in this video we'll be taking a look at Zorin OS 6 Ultimate, which was kindly provided to me from the Zorin OS team. So I've got it installed in VirtualBox, and I must say, spoiler alert here, I think this might be one of the highest scoring distros I've reviewed so far. 90 plus percent, I reckon. But let's take a look at it. Zorin is an ideal distro for anyone who is new to Linux. But the styling here is very much ideal for Windows users who would like to stay with uh, the style that they're used to. This particular desktop is styled to look like Windows 7. I think so you've got the application menu, various applications and categories you can switch to. But I have to say one of the party pieces of this distro is the look changer. Now this is much improved from previous versions because you can change look straight away. Now check that out, straight into a Windows XP styling. Brilliant. There's more looks provided in the ultimate version of Sorin. I believe the core version, which is a free one, only has a few backgrounds, only has about three of them. But I'm taking a look at that very soon. So Zorin Ultimate costs 10 euros to download, so it really isn't a lot. It's quite cheap that. So there, we are, there we are, we've even got the dreaded Unity background. Well, actually, I like Unity, but this is not Unity itself, it's just styled to look like Unity. I think it actually looks a bit nicer than Unity. Right, let's just continue on. There's the Mac OS look. And last one is the GNOME 2. So, there's a desktop style for everyone here. So if you liked GNOME 2, Windows 7, XP, 2000, Unity or Mac, this has it all in this distro. Now one other party piece with this distro is the background changer. Now this, I like. <laughs> Moving backgrounds, oh yeah. Now that's complete, I'm happy. But no. <laughs> we'll continue on the review in the Windows 7 style desktop. So as I mentioned, we've got the application menu there. Now we've got a few quick launchers at the bottom. So we've got Chromium, File Manager, and Rivenbox Media Player. Now Rivenbox has access to the Ubuntu One Music Store, and you can purchase songs here, and they'll automatically get downloaded into your music folder. Across on the right-hand side, we've got the Network Menu, Sound Menu, the Rivenbox Media Player controls, Messaging and Email Menu, Calendar, session switcher and shutdown. This distro is based on Ubuntu 12.04 and like Ubuntu it's a long-term support release which will be supported right up until 2017. You've got some of the nice easy to use features so for installing applications you've got the Ubuntu Software Center and you've got the application ratings and reviews so if you just click on one of these and click install. It really is as simple as that to get applications installed. Under the system settings, you've got a similar menu like Ubuntu has. You've got the various settings for the operating system. That one there might be useful if you need to install your drivers for your graphics cards or certain wireless network cards. It's the additional drivers program. Normally it will automatically appear when you first install. But don't worry if you don't have any drivers that are needed. We'll take a look what we get pre-installed. There's an awful lot of applications that come in the Ultimate Edition, so I won't go through all of them. But under Accessories, you've got your various accessories here. You've even got VirtualBox installed, not necessarily useful for everyone. Under Games, you've got quite a lot of games pre-installed. So you've got a Tron game, a Battle for Wesnoff, Brutal Chess, oh yeah, that sounds good. A Solitaire, Mahjong, Mars, that's a shoot 'em up uh, we've also got Mines, Pingus, Quadrupercel, Sudoku, oh, yeah. Super Tux Cart, oh yeah, gotta love Super Tux Cart, the Trigger Rally and Exmoto. Let's try Mars, this was a weird one, I saw this quite a while back, very pink and colourful. Don't expect performance to be impressive because I am in a virtual machine here. Under internet, so we've got desktop sharing, empathy and instant messenger, that's compatible with various instant messaging clients, Google Chrome, Gwibber social client, Composer, HTML editor, 
Skype, Skype version 4, Thunderbird email, transmission, torrent downloader, and the Zorin web browser manager. And that's like the browser manager that you get in Windows, which allows you to easily install other web browsers. Perhaps a bit unnecessary, because that could be in the software center, but it's a nice enough feature. And right, so continuing, continuing on, we've got Office, a few various small applications there, and then we've got LibreOffice. And LibreOffice is an alternative to Microsoft Office. It's compatible with all the Microsoft Office documents. As you can see, I'll just go into Save As. We'll choose, uh, which we have, oh, we can have Word 2007, Word 2010, docx file. So under Sound and Video, oh, I'm not going to read all these out. A couple of audio players, some sound editors, cheese webcam, uh, Kazam Screencaster. You've even got a couple of video editors. You've got Caden Live and OpenShot video editors. A Transmageddon Video Transcoder. VLC Media Player. Wow, there's a couple of surplus ones here. I'd say, well, why do you need both XBMC and MIF TV? Hmm, perhaps a bit much there. And the system tools. A few various things here. DVD Disaster. DVD disaster creates error correction data to protect your CDs and DVDs, DVD media against data loss. I didn't know that one was there. Let's take a look at the system monitor. So as you can see, we've got Linux kernel 3.2, using GNOME 3.4. And in terms of resources, uh, I've had a few applications open now, but that's about 700 meg of RAM. I think it was just below 600 before I opened anything up. CPU usage isn't too bad though, it's quite low. Right, carrying on, we have Universal Access, We've got gesture recognition, the onboard on screen keyboard, and a screen reader. We've got Wine, oh, that even comes with Play on Linux and Wine Tricks. That's for being able to use certain Windows programs within Zorin. By default, Linux cannot run Windows applications, but you can with Wine. Not guaranteed to work 100% though. Software, software center we've already looked at. And last one, places your home, computer and network folders. Here's what I thought of Zorin OS 6 Ultimate. Easy to use. Well, it certainly is. And there's a lot of work done to make it ideal for anyone who's new from Windows or Mac to be able to get along and use the system absolutely fine. Ease of installation, yep, it's got the graphical installer, easy enough to dual boot with Windows. Styling, <laughs> it's got some styling for everyone there. I thought all the various different desktops were absolutely brilliant. Customization, you can certainly customise all the desktops. Boot up speed, well, despite all the applications it has pre-installed, the boot up speed was actually very quick. It certainly was on par with Ubuntu 12.04. Number of bugs. There's a few minor issues with compis and some of the desktop styling. You see some of the effects will overlap each other and not everything changes perhaps as it should. But they're really minor. It doesn't really affect the overall use of the operating system. A selection of pre-installed apps. There's quite a lot on there and perhaps in a way too many on the Ultimate. I can see what they've done though. They've given you a lot, of, lot to choose from. I'd say just perhaps a few too many on there. A number of apps available. Giving it top marks this time because they've added quite a lot of repositories and there's loads of applications available from the software center. And yes, it comes with both the 32 and 64 bit versions. So the good point, well, there's desktop style for everyone. So whether you like the Windows 7, XP 2000 or Unity, Mac, or even the old classic GNOME 2. There's a desktop style for you there. And it's ready to use straight out of the box. And you know, as, as I said, it's ideal for anyone who's new to Linux and wanting to stay with a familiar Mac or Windows theme. Bad points. Only one minor point here that it seems to be missing the equivalent effect for the Aero Snap. And that effect you do get in Ubuntu, where as you can see, it takes up half the screen when you push an application into the corner. Overall there, I think this is, this is the highest rating I have given the distro, at 95%. It's absolutely brilliant, that was. So, thanks for watching. See you later.